that's what's more fun for me. Right? career spanning more than 30 years and over 50 films, Kevin Bacon has become a long distance runner in Hollywood. He's kept in the race by acting brilliantly in both lead roles and also taking on key supporting roles that have an impact on film. In fact, his many credits have inspired a game, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. The idea being that he start on so many projects that he can be linked to any actor in six steps or less. But he hasn't always been so well known. After graduating from New York Square Theatre School, Kevin had hoped his first film, Animal House, would lead to instant fame. But unfortunately, this wasn't the case. So he returned to waiting tables and auditioning for stage work. He first caught Hollywood's attention as the hot-headed alcoholic Fenwick in Diner. But it was the box office smash Footloose that made Kevin Bacon a household name. So what does he think about plans to remake the movie that gave him his big break? I was uh, thrilled that they're doing it again. You know, it's one of those things where you, you kind of, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror, I don't look at someone and say, you know, myself and say, oh, oh they'll be remaking your movies now. You know, it's, it's been 30 years, I guess it's time. You know, I, you know, it should be cool. The phenomenal success of Footloose was a mixed blessing. Not wanting to be typecast as a teen heartthrob, he looked for films that would give him the chance to show the range of his acting abilities, starring in She's Having a Baby and Tremors. But Hollywood wasn't ready to accept Kevin as a serious leading man, and his career hit a rough patch, but he didn't let it get him down. It's always ups and downs. Um, I, I think at the worst time, uh, when I really, you know, I had no, no money in the bank and no prospects of work and the, and the you know, the, the auditions weren't coming and I still knew that I was going to be in it for the long haul. I still knew that this is what I was going to do with my life. So just kind of knowing that in the back of your mind makes it possible to, to, to ride out the, the hills and valleys. While his professional life struggled, Kevin's personal life flourished. And in 1988, he married actress Kira Sedgwick, and they have two children together. By 1991, Kevin gave up on the idea of playing leading men, instead focusing on smaller, edgier roles. His performance as a gay prostitute in Oliver Stone's JFK, and as an attorney in A Few Good Men, won him praise and recognition as a powerful, serious actor. A Few Good Men also gave Kevin the chance to work with one of his idols, Jack Nicholson which would be pretty intimidating to most of us, but not to Kevin. Something that I'm comfortable with, I'm comfortable on a set, so, you know, uh, you know, other actors don't really usually intimidate me. I mean, I just, it's just not the way it is. Continuing to impress through supporting but memorable roles, Kevin showed us his scary side in The River Wild, playing a menacing, compulsive liar who terrorizes Meryl Streep and her family while on a whitewater rafting trip. It's great to be a bad guy, you know? I mean, it's, 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 it's fun. Every once in a while, I look at myself, you know, in the dailies, and I kind of go, <laughs> is that really me, you know, doing mean things to the kid? That bothered me a little, but other than that, it was fun. Still struggling to move on from his electrifying performance in Footloose, Kevin Bacon was keen to kick off his Sunday shoes and look for lead roles that would challenge him as an actor. Since Footloose, I was sort of trying to you know, reverse the effects of that movie in an odd sort of way. I would like now to, uh, you know, do leads again, you know, to carry a, you know, an action movie or a, a romantic comedy or, you know, to be, you know, the guy and and that's running, you know, the movie's built around. After more supporting roles in films like Murder in the First, Apollo 13, and Picture Perfect. He successfully landed lead roles in Hollow Man and Stir of Echoes. On set, Kevin found his character's journey could have an impact on his own personality. You, you try to create the impression that it's real as possible. You try to reflect as much as you can reality. But really, you're, you're, you are turning it on, you're turning it off. However, the process of doing it affects you personally. You, you can't help it. 
feel that way. If you're having like a real happy kind of fun scene, you know, you tend to have a happy fun day. If you're if you're having a scene where you're uh, either giving or receiving some sort of pain, it, it it you know creates a certain amount of pain. Kevin gave a powerful performance in Mystic River, playing a cop who's sent back to his old neighborhood to investigate a murder. After reading the script, he was so impressed he didn't care which role he got, just as long as he was in the movie. When I first r read the script, I didn't really know which part I was going to play, uh, but. You know, sometimes it, it's hard to find one good part that you're right for, but to find three great parts that, uh, you know, I would have been thrilled to play any one of those parts uh, was, you know, uh, a kind of a godsend. Kevin believes in-depth role preparation is critical. So before playing a cop in Mystic River, he spent time with the Massachusetts State Police. I like to prepare. I mean, I like to know what I'm doing before I get to work. I mean, the idea that people come to work not prepared is preposterous to me. It's a waste of everybody's time. I mean, if you're an actor and you're worth your salt, if you're being paid a, a lot of money, even if you're not being paid at all, you know, take some pride in what it is that you, you're doing, your job, and do your homework, do your preparation, learn your lines, you know, uh, get yourself to work on time, and come ready to work, whether it's, you know, Clint Eastwood or anybody. Never one to shy away from a challenging role, in The Woodsman, Kevin plays a pedophile who's trying to re-enter society after 12 years in jail. While many actors would struggle with the dark and confronting subject matter, Kevin handled it with ease. If being an actor necessitates getting in touch with um, all sorts of dark sides of yourself. I think that, uh, I often say that it's, it's oddly um, therapeutic because I think that uh, a lot of us walk around with demons. I mean, that's, that's the human condition. You know, you, you have dark thoughts and dark feelings inside yourself, no matter how easygoing a person you may be. Multi-talented, Kevin also took on producing duties on Wild Things and The Woodsman. He made his directorial debut in Loverboy, having learned a lot from mentor Clint Eastwood, although he admits he isn't as calm a character. And I think I get a little bit more frustrated, but I did learn a tremendous amount about directing by watching him and about the possibilities of um, creating a, uh, a safe and relaxed working environment. And to the extent that I, I can't wait to direct again just to try to use some of his stuff. You know. But just because he's stepped behind the camera, don't think he's given up acting just yet. And you know, I like to do all kinds of things, you know, and uh, uh, in, in a creative life, I think you can, you know, try all sorts of things. And uh, directing is a really, really exciting. It's a very, very different kind of energy that you use, but um, it's really fun. And if I find another story that I want to tell and somebody's willing to give me a shot at telling it, I, I would love to do it again. In 2008, Kevin worked with legendary director Ron Howard on Frost Nixon, a brilliantly acted Oscar-nominated film. And with his father being a seventh cousin of President Nixon, Kevin was committed to providing a truthful portrayal of Nixon's protector, Jack Brennan. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's always a little bit different when you're telling a, uh, a story, you know, uh, that's based on real people and real events. Um, you know, certainly I felt like I had a responsibility to the character that I was playing to uh, try to at least uh, get some of the essence of who I, I think he was and put that out there. Kevin then continued to follow his MO, featuring in an ensemble cast for Crazy Stupid Love. Although this film is predominantly a comedy, Kevin enjoyed the substance and underlying message it offered. While it's really fun and a little bit wacky, it's all really rooted in a, in a really kind of serious, um, you know, question and, 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 and it's in real kind of emotional sort of expression. And so you don't feel like you're just doing something completely goofy, even though there were definitely some goofy moments. The linking game, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, has stemmed from his long and illustrious career. At first, Kevin believed the game was a joke at his expense. But as the years went on and the theory grew, Kevin became fond of the idea that we are all connected in some way. This led him to set up the charitable website sixdegrees.org, a social networking site designed to connect people with charities, creating an easy way to make donations. 
I never expected um, to come to the point in my life where I kind of said, wow, I, you know, I want to I, I sort of do something like that, step out of myself and, you know, put something like this together. Well, if you're a young actor with dreams of Hollywood and want to achieve longevity in the industry, start by studying the project choices of Kevin Bacon. A versatile and masterful actor, he can nail a complex supporting role, but at the same time has the skill to carry a film on his own. And his surprising and challenging role choices has made him one of Hollywood's most intriguing players. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better. Find or follow us at Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and MNC.TV.